This is a video I took on an adventure camping trip to a remote area in Alaska in 1995. I flew into Fairbanks where my bags were transferred to a local bed and breakfast. There were eight paying adventurers who met for the first time at this bed and breakfast. Our b and host, Steve, served a healthy breakfast. We were preparing to have a bush pilot fly us to a very remote part of Alaska at the very extreme northeast corner of the state. We were going to be exploring the area around the Kangakut River. And we needed to bring everything we needed. There are no people or no stores within a hundred miles of this place. Um, you got your tent, you've got your sleeping bag. Do, right. you, do you have a sleeping pad? Like, a thermo rest or something? Yes. I okay. Um, One of the trip organizers, Dee Dee, checked three to make like sure that. we had everything Four we'd need. Like this, these things, we I brought our own tents, right. sleeping bags, and clothing. That's what now, it right. can rain. Uh -huh. We'll be on the river some of the time. Dee Dee wanted to be sure that our things did yeah, not get like wet. You've got everything. Um, I put everything in garbage bags okay. inside my dry bag. Okay. I put all of my clothes in one bag. Right. Uh, stuff in the other. I put uh, my tent in one my actually I don't worry about the tent so much. Uh -huh. I put uh, right. my sleeping bag in its own garbage bag and my thermo rest in its own garbage bag and then they all go inside, they slide real nice inside of one big bag. And the bag. purpose of that is in case the dry bag fails. Right. You've got everything. Right. Okay. At the appointed time for departure it was raining. <laughs> Foul weather for flying. We assembled around our otter one of the two bush planes that were going to fly us to the Congregate River. Yeah. The otter bush plane is widely used in Alaska. <laughs> we loaded the plane with our gear. The pilots prepared the airplanes. And we waited for the weather to clear. In Alaska, Mother Nature is king, I should say queen. Our moves were dictated by the weather she gave us. There is no room for a rigid schedule when you're planning a wilderness trek in Alaska. Finally, we got the okay from the weatherman to fly north. And we boarded the two airplanes, which were going to take us and land us in the wilderness. <laughs> I am flying in the Otter with four others. The rest are in the Cessna 185 that flew beside us from time to time. The flight was three hours in duration. As I looked out the window, I marveled at all the water the lakes and the rivers that stretched out below us. How did the early occupants survive here? We flew over the Brooks Range of mountains. They're in the 6,000 to 7,000 foot elevation range. And we arrived at our river, the Kangakut, just about 10 in the evening. Our pilot created some anxiety in me and the others as he appeared to try and land the plane seven different times. The landable portion of the sandbar before running into water was 900 feet. The otter, fully loaded, needs 600 feet to land safely and get stopped. I've made a separate video just about this landing experience. If you want to hear a bush pilot tell how he goes about landing, then enter the words Franklin Clay Films Bush 
1995 in the YouTube search box. In late June, like it is today, the sun never sets at this latitude. After we were safely down, the other plane, the Cessna 185, made only one pass, circled back, and then landed. I should explain that the organizers of this trip, the guides, had divided the trip into three parts. The first part was a 10-day backpacking hike. That part ended when we arrived by plane. So when we landed at the Congregate River, we met the chief guide for the first time, McGill. He's in the red hat and the mustache. We'd been dropped off by the river with towering mountains around us, and we set up camp. Now, my tiny tent is almost lost in this vast vista. My clothes were stored in the green waterproof bag. The next morning, we assembled for breakfast. Food was good. For many on the trip, food was one of the highlights of the trip. Cooking in the wilderness is a challenge. I played it safe and filtered all the water I drank from the river. Each day of the trip included a nature walk. There's some more of it right here. Our guide, McGill, was very knowledgeable about the plants, the birds, and the animals we saw. He was always looking for some different species to show us. We walked over very uneven ground called tundra. It's kind of a crazy quilt of water, tufts of grass, and pockholes. This boggy ground was awkward to walk on. From time to time, we did spot animals in the distance, and they sure seemed safe up there. We climbed higher and higher, going through several diverse vegetation-growing areas. Whenever we stopped walking, we were using our binoculars to search for animals. Yet often, there were interesting plants and flowers just at our feet. About halfway through a nature walk, we would stop and relax for an hour or so. We ate snacks. <coughs> M&M's and cheese were favorites. We enjoyed the magnificent scenery and we socialized, we talked. Uh, the people are really memorable. And so I remember uh, the high points for me were really, really the social point. It was, it was like, a, it's like a family or a tribe. And I think I know what it was like uh, to uh, live uh, now, obviously, we weren't living off the land, but we were living with each other, and that felt really great. I think I'll remember that most of all. While we were sitting there, we spotted a fairly large bird in the grass, and a ground squirrel was curious. Then we started walking again. First it was down. Then it was across. McGill led us into a thicket. There he pointed out and identified bird nests. Then we followed behind him, trying not to get scratched. 
we crossed over the river to get back to our campsite. Every other day, we would break camp, get our pontoon rafts into the river, and float downstream. There were four people in each raft. In general, the river flowed very smoothly, and we could relax and enjoy the scenery. But from time to time, everyone had to paddle to position the raft correctly. By and large, we had gorgeous weather. From time to time, we would encounter white water, but it never seemed too treacherous to me. And uh, second of all, I like any kind of physical challenge and physical adventure. And so, and especially rafting, which I've done once before. So those are my two reasons. Other than that, I had no expectations. If we saw a herd of caribou, it would be fine. If we didn't, it would be fine. I just wanted to see what was, and I was open. And the trip met all my expectations and more. And if I had to say one thing I like the best, I couldn't do it. I absolutely couldn't do it. It's just the experience. I think it's the sort of the sensualness of living outdoors for 10 or 11 days, whatever it was. Um, it was a wonderful, authentic group of people. It was physical challenge, hiking every day, sweating every day, experiencing more mosquitoes than I could ever imagine and living through it and it was okay and it was no big deal. Fabulous food, being on the river, physical scenery that was as beautiful as anything I've ever seen in my life. I just, that was just perfect. It was a perfect trip. After a couple of hours on the water, we would pull over and park. During our break from the water, we would take another nature walk and examine this part of the mountain range's ecosystem. Yes, you guessed it. Those are mosquitoes. Then it was back to the water. One feature of the Congregate River is that it is in a generally wide valley. In some places, the river splits into a number of different rivers, braided. Some of these rivulets were navigable and some were not. Sometimes these braided rivulets were just too shallow for our rafts to float through without additional help. I think the thing that to me was the most fun was paddling down that river, watching for the animals, seeing the scenery go by, and hearing about the, the valleys that we could have come down on our backpack. At the end of the day on the river, we got our raft to the shoreline near a good camping area. We got out of the raft and noticed wildlife activity on the nearby mountain side. Are they lambs or are they kids? They're, they're kids, but lambs, aren't they? The rafts were walked down to the spot that McGill had selected for our next campsite. We unloaded everything off the rafts. Each group went off to set up their own tent. The guides carried the rafts onto land. The rafts would do double duty, both as rafts and as walls for our meeting area and kitchen. And the rafts provided some protection from the wind. You'll notice that the oars do double duty also, helping to hold things up. 
When we finished setting up camp, some doll sheep observed us from the side of the mountain. I must say it was fun, almost mesmerizing, to watch these sheep deftly move across the side of the mountain. Once camp was established, we headed out for a quick nature walk before dinner. McGill had expected we would see doll sheep at this campsite, and he was right. We continued to walk on up. Our objective was a mountain ridge. Marvelous colors in some of the moss. From up on this ridge, we had a great view of the river and the braids in the river and of our campsite. My tent is the blue one. The community tent and kitchen has the green roof. The yellow colored tents housed everyone else. Pete, our main photographer, was getting lots of good shots up here. By the way, it's about 10 o'clock at night right now, although here at this time of the year, it's daylight all day long. It's never night. The next morning, when I got up, the doll sheep were so close, they were in our camping area. After breakfast, we began to gather for the day's nature walk. None of us paying participants was particularly experienced as an outdoor person. We were, as a result, subjected to physical activity that was new to us and sometimes quite challenging. Each of us had to accept the fact that we were days away from help should we get injured or sick. We had young people and older people, and the guides pretty much allowed us each to find our own way, though the guides did stress safety. Today's walk took us back away from the river, up a valley. Can you spot the bird watching us in the middle of the frame? After walking for several hours, we came to another fast-moving stream. We made this our rest stop. There would be plenty of cold water here. After the rest stop, we started climbing in earnest. This bird reminded me of a robin. Was this the same species? I'm no bird person. But I do appreciate colorful flowers. This one was a beauty. It was quite amazing to me to see the variety of wildflowers that were in bloom here in the wilderness in July in Alaska. We finally got to the top of a rocky peak. The wind was blowing. From there, we had a nice view of a lush valley with a small river that fed into the Congregate River. I found a separate nice perch from which to view the scenery. The others celebrated their victory on their perch. An a. <laughs> then we started down. Walking down can be treacherous.
Dinner, as usual, was held in the communal tent and kitchen. Typically, we would stay up past midnight in order to enjoy the midnight sunlight. Staying up late meant we slept until 9 or 10 in the morning. We would get out of our tents and go to breakfast and hot coffee in the kitchen. By this time, the weather had warmed up and it was very pleasant. We did lots of socializing and bonding. This was a day we would be on the river, so one chore was to break camp. That meant taking down each of our tents. And I should mention that, as you might expect, one encounters unexpected problems when you go camping. I had difficulty with ground squirrels. I had pitched my tent on nice, soft dirt. The ground squirrels liked to make their homes in this nice, soft dirt. It's easy to dig. So I had a constant problem with these darn animals. When I was there, they were making noise and running around. And when I wasn't there, they were examining everything I left out and chewing on it. After taking down the tents, we stored our belongings in waterproof duffel bags. These waterproof bags were carried to the put-in point for the rafts. Before we left on our river raft trip for the day, about half of our group took a short nature walk. Looking at them on the side of the hill, you can see how insignificant we human beings are in comparison to the wilderness area we were visiting. Some of us stayed back at the camp while the others were up on their short walk. One of us tried his luck at fishing. <laughs> I don't remember that he caught anything. I noticed one lone caribou walking near our campsite. I think this caribou was trying to find its herd. And the wind blew. Everything had to be tied down. Now, one annoyance in Alaskan travel is mosquitoes. Under certain conditions, mosquitoes require special care to avoid being bitten. I wore a net over my hat that draped over my shoulders. This prevented the mosquitoes from getting to my mouth, my nostrils, and my ears. By the middle of the afternoon, we had reassembled the rafts and were back floating down the river. At places, the current got quite a bit faster. And since it was nearing the end of our adventure, some of us were becoming nostalgic. The, the flow of this river is, a, is an experience to, to uh, uh, remember and, and to deal with. I've been out here for three weeks, 10 days of um, hiking and 10 days of rafting. And I would say that the best things about this trip have been self-sufficiency in hiking without any sort of backup, carrying our packs and living out of tents. Uh, the beauty of the environment, learning about the animals around us and how they um, operate, how they behave. Great food, great people, and, um, and being in a place where so few people have ever been and maybe ever will be. And the worst thing's the mosquitoes. The things that I liked the most about the trip was the experience of flying into a wilderness area. Also, I liked the pristine <coughs> landscape <coughs> of the mountains and the, the rivers that were braided, the uh, <coughs> floating and also the hiking <coughs> were very enjoyable. So the things that I was disappointed in was that we weren't able to see more wild animals. We did see a wolverine, that was a thrill. The mosquitoes were pretty horrible the last couple of days, but when a breeze came by, it made them even tolerable. 
The food was very good, and I also enjoyed the companionship of the other people on the trip. This was our last day on the river. We got our rafts to shore. And then we had our last nature walk, all before dinner. This walk took us up a saddle to a peak with a fantastic view. Looking south, we could see the braids in the Congregate River and its broad valley. But the most memorable sight was looking north. Here we could actually see the coastline of Alaska and the Beaufort Sea, part of the Arctic Ocean. What a thrill! I could have sat there for hours as long as I was covered from head to toe with mosquito netting. While I was there, I thought about some of the other sights I'd seen on the trip. Gorgeous wildflowers in bloom, almost in any direction you looked. Bird species that I'd never seen before, and being able to get up close to them. And then there were the telltale tracks left by thousands of caribou passing through here just days before. It's hard to bring a trip like this to a close, but our newly bonded group, our tribe, spent our last evening first celebrating Dr. Bill's retirement from his gynecology practice. We gave him lots of silly presents and momentums for him to take home to use to remind him of the trip. And we danced a little. Then four of our more outgoing members put on a down memory lane skit for the rest of us. It had been a fantastic trip. First you gotta pump the boat. <laughs> then you gotta row the boat. <laughs> then you gotta land the boat. <laughs> it's enough to make you crazy. <laughs> now I started out when I was on this trip. I was an ecologist. I was up. I was down. I loved all everything in town. <laughs> but now I've ended up psychotic. <laughs>